guys it's danny deals here hello and welcome welcome and hello and hello and welcome back to another exciting edition of un poco moss the show where we give you just a little bit more on behalf of executive producer hurricane lopez and supervising producer stock karen we would like to welcome you to today's broadcast um it is june 5th 2023 it's about 4 15 p.m out here in beautiful sunny los angeles 7 15 out in nyc hope it's a great night wherever you are guys if today ends in a y i'm going to talk to you about sofi technologies incorporated what did you think i was going to talk to you about the weather how to bake bread which vacuum cleaner was best there's plenty of D-bags on YouTube doing that. So this D-bag's gonna talk to you about SoFi. Guys, I believe it was Shakespeare who said, brevity is the soul of wit. Well, on this channel, you get neither brevity nor wit. So pull your head out of your keister and strap on because this is gonna be another long, boring, dry video about the SoFi stock. Guys, I'm gonna share my screen with you. I'm feeling very, very generous. Um, SoFi Technologies today closed at 725, up 22 big cents on the day or 3.13%. Stock is flat after hours. Volume was again heavy today, pushing 70 million shares traded. Um, guys, if you know anything about SoFi, you know this chart pattern on the daily well. Uh, pushes up a ton in the morning. Uh, so in the first half hour, first uh, 15 minutes, in fact, of trading, we're sitting up at $7.58. Stock immediately pushes down as if it's on a clock, um, comes right back to the 75 key level. If you guys were lucky enough, fortunate enough to catch my live stream this morning, if not, go ahead and check it out in the link. I don't know if it's here, here, or here. Um, I'm not gonna link to it down in the description. I'm not gonna put a link here or here or here or anywhere else um, because I don't really know how to do that and I don't care. Uh, if you wanna watch the video, you could take two seconds and find it for yourself. Go over to Ask Jeeves, search for Danny Deal's dry SoFi videos and they should come right Right up. Um, guys, I digress. I kind of forgot what I was talking about, but the bottom line is what always happens, what has happened is then over the next hour of trading, the stock sells back off. It's shorted back down and that happened again today. Then normally we would have this little mound pattern where the stock would go up a little bit, trade sideways in the algo and then sell off at the very end of the day. Guys, that's not what happened here today. The stock sold off down to 725, which again, if you watch my live stream, you will hear that was my key level, my key pivot point for the day. And then the algo Algo grabbed hold of it starting at 10.40 a.m. And the Algo had a hold of it the entire rest of the day, traded sideways right at that uh, 723, 724, 725 level. Um, the low of the day went back down to uh, 710. I think that 707 was near open, but it might've been here. About 11.30 a.m. made a low uh, just under 710, uh, popped back up almost immediately to 725. Guys, what we're seeing is that um, when the stock makes a low now, whether it's the low of the day or coming back down to uh, test one of the support or resistance lines, we're not staying there where anyone can accumulate shares at those levels. It's popping. It's popping right back up off those levels. Um, that's telling me that the buyers are not having an opportunity to accumulate at their prices. That's telling me that the sellers are in charge of the stock. And um, basically the bulls are in charge now. Um, we had a day today where there, with the short activity was shares being returned. And what happens? Um, the stock goes up. The, the algo can't push it back down. It's trying to trade it downward and sideways, as you know, and accumulate, wash out retail. Um, that's what the stock's been doing for 15 months now, but that's simply not happening anymore. Um, let me show you how this works on the chart here, guys. You've seen my chart with all these lines drawn arbitrarily. Um, you might see the run that started right here on January 5th and then the run that started right here on May 15th. And you might say, those look very, very similar, don't they? Um, you see that there is a gap up about five more candles up to this high, gap up here about five more candles. Um, the difference, I think, um, there's a couple of key differences. The one is that this little escalator here um, takes, so oh, I think about 12 trading days where this one takes only about eight or nine. Um, the reason that's critical, I'm going to tell you right now, guys, if you look at this, you see more similarities, a huge pump and dump 
um, coming out of earnings. Um, that happened right here, or no, that's not earnings. That's um, April for or uh, November first. Yeah, that that would be um, for uh, that would be Q three. And then you have this huge uh, dump, and then you have a little pump. It's very similar if you look at these two patterns right here. Um, the one is on uh, May 1st and the one over here is on November 1st. Pattern looks almost exactly the same. Difference is you get this huge buyback on November the 11th where you get a slightly smaller buyback but still the same general pattern on um, May 22nd. Uh, you get the stock gapping up, gapping up. Now, what's the difference, you ask yourself? What's the difference? It's subtle, but it's crucial. Subtle, but crucial. Um, guys, the difference is this. When you have this sell-off here, um, starting on uh, April, on November 28, you reach a bottom, okay? And then you test that again, it runs back along the trend line. Pops back up a little bit, comes back, test that again, and then you start the run. But this is over a month. This is consolidating. So this is saying buyers and sellers are basically at that level, they're meeting, they're happy, there's plenty of buyers, plenty of sellers at that level. And at this point, when that's happening and the stock is trending slightly downward, I would say bears are still in charge of the stock. Then you see this run. What's the difference over here? You do not have this period of consolidation after the pump and dump and this massive sell-off. You simply touch support and boom, you bounce right back off with buying pressure. There's no opportunity for buyers and sellers to churn the stock and sell to their rat holes and for shorts to cover on the back of mom and pop who are getting screwed on a daily basis. No, that can't happen because buyers are just rushing back into the stock. It touches the line once and it pops and then it sells back off and it tests support again right here on May 15th. Not four, five, and six tests of that line. You have one test here on May 15th and then boom, the stock pops again. And then on the news of the deal of the, um, of the debt deferment um, being eliminated with the uh, debt, uh, with the, sorry guys, with the um, deficit increase, with the debt limit increase vote, then the stock just completely explodes. And um, it is not coming back, guys. These two patterns, um, the one starting here in November and the other one starting here in May, they look similar, but they're very different because there is no period of churn and consolidation when the stock tests support. There's simply immediate buying pressure. The market makers are not able to control and manipulate the stock. The shorts are screwed. The shorts are completely trapped. There's 237 million shares on borrow. And what are you going to do when the bulls run wild on you? To paraphrase, to paraphrase Terry Boella, you may know better as Hulk Hogan. I probably mispronounced his name. But anyway, guys, I digress. Um, that's the chart. What's going to happen next with the chart? I'm going to read through an article here um, that basically this guy lifted all my ideas from my recent videos and put them into an article for fame and fortune. I can't blame him, guys. We have such great ideas over here at Un Poco Mas. If other journalists want to steal them and pass them off as their own to keep their shams of a career going keep their ungrateful wife around just a little bit longer. You guys go ahead. You do what you have to do. Danny Deals doesn't want to stand in your way. Take my information. Um, it's great information. I'm just trying to get it out there. Um, guys, uh, this is an article by Brett Kenwell. Um, according to Tip Ranks, he is a horrible analyst, but because he agrees with me, I am going to say his point and his article have a lot of credibility despite his poor track record and uh, poor resume. So anyway, guys, we're going to accept these cookies because what do we care? Um, steal my identity, folks. What do you want? My penny stocks? What do you want? My... Um, my credit, uh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Depends how awful yours is. But anyway, guys, this article, How Far Can SoFi Stock Rally? Chart provides a clue. This is over at thestreet.com, Brett Kenwell. I read a few of his articles. The guy is basically credible. Um, SoFi Technologies has been on fire with a bit of bullish momentum carried into Monday's session. It has eased. The shares were up as much as 8.1% on the day, but are now up 3% on the session. Um, 
this article was just three hours ago, guys. What's driving the stock? Broadly speaking, the recent price action growth has been encouraging. They use ARK, uh, ARKK as sort of a proxy for growth stocks, and it just had its first close over the 50-week moving average. So ARKK compared to SoFi is absolute garbage. It's cabbage. It's trash. You trash, ARK. You trash. Kathy Wood. I mean, let, let's just get off on a Kathy Wood tangent. Like, innovation does not equal monetization. Like... Innovation, disruption, what happens is that brilliant person who had a great idea then gets ripped off by some scumbag and they take your idea and they monetize it with a whole different company and you don't see anything. And Kathy Wood is left sitting there going, you know, they're going to do machine learning and AI and I, I was right to buy, you know, uh, Teladoc and I was right to buy this and I was right, but... But you weren't. You were wrong. Anyway, guys, back to SoFi. Trading SoFi stock, um, more specifically speaking, the debt ceiling negotiations and its impact on student loans were being viewed as a positive by SoFi. They're not viewed as a positive. It is a positive. Student loans, the deferments are over by federal law. They can't come back. Um, it, it's a positive. It's not some maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. Don't both sides this. SoFi finally wins one. Don't try to both sides me, you turd. Um, take a look at Monday's high on SoFi stock. The figure currently stands at $7.60. Folks, did we ever think we would see that figure again? Um, I did, but I started to have my doubts there after a little while. But you know, we all, we all have our doubts. We all have our moments of weakness. But what do I do when that happens? I just buy, I buy, I buy the SoFi stock. And that makes me feel just a little bit better. Um, guys, um, so this is where it gets a little bit, um, he's getting into Fibonacci here, um, which, you know, I'm I'm not a huge believer in pulling those charts out. I you could pull pull something out of your keister that would be um, just as useful in my opinion. But that figure currently stands at seven dollars and sixty cents, which happens to be the seventy eight point six retracement of the fifty two week range. How fitting for shares to f to rally to this level and fade considerably. Mm, I don't think that's what's going to happen, but let's read on. That said, the price action doesn't necessarily translate to bearish. Instead, it suggests that the shares might simply need a bit of a break. SoFi stock gapped up over the 50 and 200 day moving averages on May 30. What have I been telling you? Then exploded over the downtrend resistance the following day. That's what I've been calling the short term wedge that's gone out for six months now, guys. It also exploded over the long term wedge that goes back all the way to the highs from uh, two to three years ago. So it's gone over both those resistance lines, the 50 and 200 day, and it's playing around with the 10 day moving, moving average. On pullback, I'd like to see the 650 area hold support alongside the 10 day moving average. If this area fails, the shares might correct down toward the 550, 575 area, which I don't want to hear that. I don't want to acknowledge its reality, but that is true because, you know, we've got to remember the stock just fell to the fours. So some uh, retracement down to the mid fives is not out of the question. I personally don't think it's going to happen, but where they'll find the 50 and 200 day moving averages, as well as the 61.8 retracement on the up side, look for a move over $7.60. That's what I've been telling you. That could open the door to $8. It does open the door to $8. There's no could about it. That door's already wide open. We just have to come on in. Um, hey, I hear you knocking. What you gonna do? Let me in. That's what SoFi's saying. Let me in. Let's get down. Let's break down that $8 level that has been an area of resistance for more than a year now. In fact, it's been 15 months since we broke through that $8 level to the downside. And we haven't seen it again since. But, oh, better days are coming. Better days are coming. And the last line by old Brett Kenwell, which sounds like a made-up name of a fake superhero. Um, and this guy looks like a made-up fake superhero a little bit. But I like the hair. Um, if SoFi stock pushes through $8, the 52-week high at $8.52 is in play. You're goddamn right that's in play. $15 is in play when we make a net profit in Q3 because Anthony Noto's got something up his sleeve, just more than great hair and Botox, folks. He's got an earnings beat up his sleeve like he does every single quarter, you freaks. All right, guys, settle down, settle down. We have an article here from Seeking Alpha and JR Research. Let's just take it down. Let's take it way down. Um, to quote Stainer, um, let's bring it down. Let's bring it way down. Um, SoFi strikes back with a punishing blow. This is by JR Research, June 3rd, 2023. So this article uh, just popped out on Saturday, just 
popped out of the womb here. Um, JR Research, not sure who this guy is, but um, let's just read over these bullet points just for laughs and to fill a little content. Maybe some of you fools are going to keep watching. Um, SoFi investors celebrated the battering of bearish investors as SoFi surged almost 60% from its May lows. CEO Anthony Noto reassured investors that SoFi remains in control of its loan sales. As such, investors shouldn't be swayed by false narratives. Do you hear that, Chia Pet? Chia Pet, false narratives, Chia Pet. When you think false narratives, think Chia Pet, think Wedbush, think bullshit, think short sellers, think illegal coordination, think FBI, think SEC, think about it. Um, SoFi's May bottom saw dip buyers returning to defend against the pessimism, likely sending short sellers scurrying for cover this week. Let me put my mind in the, let me put myself in the mindset of a short seller. I'm a, I'm a pale loser in a crappy office in a mini mall somewhere, uh, probably in the state of Florida or somewhere horrible in the Midwest, perhaps the Pacific Northwest. I'm a, I'm a horrible, horrible person. And I like just using lies and manipulation and cheating to bet against great American companies such as SoFi that stand with people, help the people get their money, right? There's a couple reasons the shorts and the bears hate SoFi and use all this lies and BS to hold the stock down. Um, number one, SoFi is taking their customers, they're taking their deposits, and um, you know, big banks don't like to see that. Certain people have personal animus against Anthony Noto, probably because he's so awesome and he's such a winner, and again, the gray hair. Um, Anyway, guys, I'm, I don't even know where I'm going with this, but uh, with the impending resumption of student loan payments after the conclusion of the debt ceiling saga, SoFi has another tailwind in the second half. As if we needed more good news, guys. SoFi buyers should consider buying the next dip more aggressively as it's no longer in a medium trend downturn. Well, no shit, Sherlock. Um, we have pretty much just broken out decisively and we're gonna break down that $8 level and then we will leave no doubt. Um, Ultimate Growth Investing member, oh, that's just an ad, sorry guys. Um, SoFi investors have received a significant boost from the conclusion of the debt ceiling saga, a company stalled debt ceiling business. Soon the pause is set to end August 30th, which we know all this stuff, guys. Student loan originations fell from 2.4 billion in Q4 2019 to 525 million in Q1. So you can see they lost about 2 billion in business just that quarter. As such, I assess the market likely priced the near-term optimism with the impending commencement of repayments, providing SoFi with another critical support toward its year-end guidance. Therefore, SoFi dip buyers who braved the extreme pessimism in May to buy the steep pullback have been rewarded as SoFi surged toward its March 2023 highs. Weak SoFi short sellers who loaded more bets in mid-May likely saw their position scorched as SoFi rose nearly 65% through this week's highs. I presented before that SoFi is a highly volatile stock, volatile stock given its unprofitability and short selling interest. However, the company is also tracking toward gap net income profitability ex exiting 2023. Yes, that's right. I'm going to say Q4 is definite gap net profit. I'm of course definite. I'm just some idiot making a statement. Nothing's definite. Anything could happen. But I'm saying it could actually happen in Q3. Quite I my my odds of gap net profit, my under over folks in Q3 are 50-50. I'm giving even odds we make a gap net profit in Q3. How about them apples? Oh, you don't like apples? Well, I don't care. More apples for me. As such, I parse that it should provide more confidence for dip buyers to pounce on significant pullbacks like the ones we saw in May. As I highlighted in another fantastic dip buying opportunity in first Q orderings release, the extreme pessimism may likely center on SoFi's personal loans, worrying trend. However, so CEO SoFi Anthony Noto rebutted the thesis in a recent conference in May and indicating that the company decided to hold the loans on its balance sheet. Noto stressed that SoFi could earn more attractive return considering several factors, including the key market dynamics. And he just goes on and on, guys. We already know a lot of this. We already know the quotes from Noto. Noto, moreover, I think uh, as such, I assess Noto's reassuring commentary helped delay unnecessary fears about SoFi's ability to maintain its profitability guidance and balance sheet capacity. Furthermore, I think SoFi's more than 10 billion in deposits for Q1, up from 17.34 billion in Q4, demonstrated that it was not caught in deposit flight, underpinning a stabilizing influence on its lending activities. You're damn right, guys. We're increasing deposits at record rates. We're one of the fastest growing banks in the United States. Customers have confidence. There's absolutely no reason for regulators to step in and take a look at SoFi has some of the best ratios of any bank in the goddamn country. One of the best managed best banks in the country. Regulators, turds from Wedbush, the Chia Pet, all you guys can kiss my grits. 
all your FUD, all your nonsense. It didn't work. Yeah, short sellers won temporarily because the Chia Pet crashed the stock along with his friends in the financial media. But over the long term, you see, it just didn't work. Um, last quarter when, when this happened, you know, it took a long time. Consolidation, churn. The market makers got to do exactly what they want. Wash it all. It didn't happen this time. Retail immediately bought the dip and it bounced. And market makers and shorts are screwed. As such, SoFi holders might not need to worry too much about catching falling knives on the next pullback, bolstering more confidence in dip buyers to add more aggressively. And their rating is a hold revised from speculative buy. So they've slightly downgraded the stock, but um, the article sounds very bullish to me. Um, and that's kind of what I mean with SoFi is like, even the bears had this thing with a lot of upside from below five bucks. The, the bearish of the bears are 650 and seven. Um, so they're basically like a break even, but the average rating on the stock right now, um, and that's Ken Brockwell, the guy's a terrible rating, but again, because he agrees with me now, he must be brilliant, right? Um, but uh, tip ranks, um, yeah, I don't have it right in front of me, but if we go over to the uh, the SoFi stock, um, you'll see that the average uh, analyst rating is for 42% upside from here. So it's like, I don't know where it was, 42% upside before this run, but uh, let's just show you since we're over here. Yeah, moderate buy, 13 ratings, um, 723. So yeah, the 42% was before this whole run. So now basically it's got eight buys, four holds, one sell. That's um, David Chiaverini. Re remember, he's just drastically skewing this data set um, at a $3 sell rating when every other person, the minimum is $6. So if you know anything about statistics, you would simply throw out uh, <laughs> that data as garbage, as an outlier, um, because it is garbage and he is garbage. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't like to hate anyone, but, you know, I... I make an exception for him. So guys, um, that's the SoFi stock today. It is a really good day. We have continuation and follow through and follow through and continuation and just basically a whole hell of a lot of buying pressure. Um, as far as the short today, I know quite a few shares uh, were returned. I have not um, had a chance to take a look at the short interest uh, but if you bear with me for just one second, just a little bit patient, stop rushing me. Stop rushing me. We'll get there when we get there. Guys, don't make your father pull this car over because he's going to tan that hide. And uh, none of us want to see something like that. Corporal punishment is not acceptable anymore, guys. You you would probably uh, be a better investor if you had a little bit more uh, discipline. You rack discipline, as they said in South Park. But um in any case, guys, uh, let's just uh, send you off with a little short report. Um, the only short squeeze you guys are going to get tonight is in your trousers, but um, that's an old joke uh, that I made up some time ago. It's been ripped off by every Tom, Dick, and Harry stock hack on YouTube. But again, you guys can have all my material. It's not worth anything, and you guys are such poor, desperate losers. You got to steal it. That's on you, guys. Who are you? Carlos Mencia out there stealing bad jokes. Um, guys, live short interest today. Um, the borrowed change was minus 2.1 million shares. So 2.7 million returned, 600,000 borrowed, 2.1 million um, returned. And that's why you see very active day, very high volume. So that those shares don't become a huge uh, proportion. But again, cost to borrow max today was all the way up at 14%, which is absolutely unheard of. Still 236 million shares on loan, 30% of the free float, very significant short on the SoFi stock. Guys, let's get you out with one more look after hours. It's 4.37 p.m. out here on the Pacific Coast. We're just down one penny after hours. So holding the gains, the buying pressure is holding up very, very solidly. Um, with the uh, good jobs numbers, uh, SoFi getting positive news on the student loan front. Um, Whatever the Supreme Court rules, guys, SoFi is going to be in very good shape. But if it rules against uh, forgiveness, that's just going to be a big boost for the SoFi stock. It doesn't make any logical sense, but oftentimes the way the market reacts does not make any logical sense. So there you have it. Um, guys, it's the SoFi stock, ticker symbol SOFI. Of course, I am the stock Karen, the huge stock Karen, and I have a complaint. I'd like to speak to your manager. If you don't give me their name and email, I'm going to have to write a letter to corporate. And the complaint is that a lot of you weak-handed turds think this rally is over. And you're starting to dump back to them shorts. This rally's not over, guys. 
we're breaking down eight bucks. I am not one to give financial advice. I'm neither qualified nor licensed. But if I was so inclined, I would tell you to buy SoFi. Buy it hand over fist. Anywhere under eight bucks. Somebody was saying, hell, anywhere under 10 bucks. Uh, 10 bucks was the public offering price. And we've had three years of, or two or three years of incredible growth and execution. And you could buy under the offering. You would be a stupid, stupid fool not to buy. If you're that big an idiot, you should go apply for a job at Wedbush. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding, folks. We love those guys. I'm just trying to tickle your funny bone a little bit to quote my good friend and associate Peter Griffin. But um, hey guys, um, I'm just going to zoom back out so you can get another view of my big sweaty melon before you go just to send you on your way home to your life, your wife and your loved ones and your life for that matter. Just what you needed guys. But guys, I'm excited to talk to you. I've had numerous espressos and um, just had some delicious kebabs. So I'm fired up. Um, it's the SoFi stock. It's $7.25. We're flat after hours, guys. Going to be another exciting day of trading tomorrow. I expect um, the market will be flat and SoFi will be green. How about that for a prediction, guys? The name's Danny Deals. The game is talking to you about for great lengths about things that are a little bit less than interesting, but certainly topical and profitable. The show is Un Poco Moss for executive producer Hurricane Lopez. I think I've done this outro like five times now, guys. Let's just say good night.